Patrons Youth, what is good? I hope that you guys are doing super, super well. Friends, we haven't done a challenge this week. This is only because we really want to focus on what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus dying on the cross and we didn't want anything to take away from that being the central meaning behind the video this week. So I hope you enjoy it. It does get messy. It does get a little bit gross at times because there's fish, there's like beans, there's coke involved and a lot of blue tech um, but hope you enjoy it and see you soon hey friends hope we're doing well so this week we are looking at this question why did jesus die on the cross so why did he die on the cross you know you may have been brought up around church and you may have heard this saying of jesus died to save us from our sin you may have heard this saying that Jesus died to save us, died so that we could live. You may have studied it in RE, RE sounds weird to say, religious studies where you've looked at this Christian faith and seen that Jesus died on the cross. But what does that actually mean? What does it really mean to save us anyway? What do we need saving from? What, but, but, but what even is sin? What's, sin, what's so bad about sin that, that I need saving from it, let alone saving in such a drastic way of a man dying on a cross? So that's what I want to look at today. In fact, the way that we're going to do that is in the form of an analogy. So let's jump into it. I've made a little human being helpful for context. If we're going to understand, right, why Jesus died on the cross, we need to go right back to the beginning. We need to go back to Genesis chapter 2, where God made mankind in his image. God made man in his likeness, and he saw that it was very, very good. He made people, right, and he had a perfect relationship with man. They were walking together in the Garden of Eden. Things were good, okay? Then we get to Genesis chapter 3, where Adam and Eve... They get tempted and sin enters into the world when they took the apple. Sin enters into the world and then their relationships with each other and their relationships with God became broken. But what does sin mean? What, what is that word? What, what even is it? So, to analogise, is that a word I just invented? To analogise, we've got human being, we've got man. And man is in the world, okay? Man is in the world. Things are cool, things are right with God, but then we get this problem. Sin. Okay? Oh, I can't get over it. Oh, let's go for something else. Let's go for Coke. Sin enters into the world. So we've got some Coke. Coke, right? You know, if there's a little fact, if you've lost a tooth recently, put your tooth in Coke, and then within a few days of it, you could chop the tooth in half. But if you had this just sat in your teeth for so long, it would stain your teeth, it would ruin your teeth, it would rot your teeth. And that's what sin's like. Sin is the thing that stains, sin is the thing that rots away at us. But then sin also smells, right? I don't know if you've ever had. Oh. Ever had like a tuna sandwich? I can't get that open. Oh, come on. I don't want to have to touch it now. Keep going. I don't know if you've ever had a tuna sandwich and like you stink. Your mouth, your breath stinks, your mouth stinks, or you ever had sardines. Um, but it affects everyone else, right? If you've had like garlic and you'll go breathing on someone, that affects people. So sin not only rots away, but it also affects other people. So we've got the impact of sin on ourselves, but we've also got the impact of sin on other people. Then we've got the tomatoes, which I'm going to try and get into after the little break. So guys, I'm struggling to get into the, to this bit of the sin. Um, got a few problems, we've got tomato juice everywhere, but we will be back. Do you want the long story or the short story? The short story is I couldn't get into the tomato tin. Tomato tin. I couldn't get into the tomato tin, so I'm having to use baked beans, which doesn't aid my analogy at all, because I love baked beans, right? But the thing is about baked beans is they've got tomato juice in it, tomato sauce in it, and what happens with tomato sauce when you've got it in like a white t-shirt? It stains it. And that's what sin's done to our lives. That's the state of sin in our world, is that it's stained us, and it's marked us, 
It stained our identity. It stained our very nature before God. Some of you hate beans, so that's also quite helpful. So in here, what we've got is we've got the state of sin, the cause of sin from Genesis 3 onwards. We've got sin that, that, that stains us and rots us, sin that stains our identity and our character, sin that affects other people. That's the problem. That's why Jesus died, because when sin came into the world, we couldn't have relationship with God. and We could not have relationship with with each other. We needed saving. And how did God do that? What was God's rescue mission? Was it to send this like massive arm down from heaven with a glove on or, you know, so we didn't have to touch the mess, we can just pick out the broken bits? No, 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 no. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Oh, yeah, I got some sin juice on it. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, sorry. It says that God made him who knew no sin to become sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. What was God's answer? What was God's rescue mission? God's rescue, rescue mission was to dwell among the mess. To become the mess. That picture that you see of Jesus on the cross is God's way of taking the mess, the sin, on his shoulders and declaring that it is finished. That picture that you see on the cross is the embodiment of all of our brokenness, all of our pain, all of our shame, the things that stain us, the things that have marked us, the words that people have said to us that have affected us and stained our identity, but the things that we've said to other people that have affected other people, he's taking that upon himself. He's taking the things, the bits of ourselves that we just don't like, the bits of ourselves that we're ashamed of, that we just can't seem to shake up. And he's taking on the things that we've done to affect other people. He's taking that upon himself. He is becoming sin. He's embodying it. He's dwelling among the mess. And what did he do when he was doing that? He was picking us out from the mess. I've got to find that. It's all. It's like a bad school dinner, isn't it? I've lost the human. Oh, I found him. He was picking us out. He was finding us. He was going to search for us because we're lost and now we are found. And he's not just picking us out. He's washing us clean. He's taking us from the mess and he's calling us into newness of life. You see, that guy looks pretty grim, doesn't it? That, that idea of putting your hand into the mess. It looks pretty grim, that idea of embodying brokenness, right? It looks pretty unpleasant. Actually, the Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So, so, so essentially, is that saying is it saying that 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 for the joy that was set before him, for the joy that was before him, me and you, he endured all of that upon himself, so that he might know us and we might know him. The most repeated phrase I think in the Bible is that they will be my God and I will be they will, that I will be their God and they will be my people. It was his pure joy that he would be reunited with you, so that so that you will be his people. And as we know what it is to be his people, we will know that we are loved, that we are valued and that we are cherished and that we are chosen in Jesus because of what he did on the cross. But the story doesn't end there. You see the picture that we see on the cross and for a couple of days we think that Jesus is dead. And the disciples think that as well. They think that Jesus is dead. But three days later he rises again from the grave nailing death defeating sin the power of sin friends does not have a hold on us anymore the power of death does not have a hold on us anymore because jesus didn't just die he rose from the grave defeating death and by doing that he's made a way for us you see, we looked at last week, didn't we, how, how Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, the way in which we live by, the way to the Father, the way, way to relationship with God. 
By dying and rising again, Jesus made a way for us to walk in freedom. Jesus made a way for us to walk in newness of life. Jesus made a way for us to walk in this new God-given identity as sons and daughters of a king. Jesus has made a way for me and for you, not just for one time in our life, not just for a one time only offer, but every single day to walk in freedom, to walk in newness of life, to walk in a way that these things that, that stain us, the things that rot us and the things that affect us and other people don't have a hold on us. But we can walk with Jesus. And what is our response to that? Well, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you what you're going to choose, but I can give you an option. I can give you an offer. Do you want to walk in newness of life? Do you want to walk in freedom? Do you want to walk turning away from our sin, turning away from all of our wrongdoing, turning away from all the things that, that we've said and done, the old identity, the old way of living? Do you want to turn to Jesus to walk in newness of life? All you do is say yes and begin a walk with Jesus. Not saying, not promising that it's all going to be easy. Not promising that it's all going to be sunshine and roses because yes, it is hard. But walking with Jesus is worth it. I'm going to pray. And at the end of the prayer, you can choose to say yes. You can choose whatever you want to do. You can choose to say yes. You can choose to say no. But this is an option today to to say yes to what Jesus did on the cross. Yes, I want, I want to walk in freedom. I want to walk in newness of life. I want to walk with Jesus. I want to walk having been united with Jesus in his death. So Father, thank you that you became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. We could be right with you. We could be with you. That sin doesn't have it's same hold on us anymore because you didn't just die, but you rose again. So, Father, I pray that that truth would rest deeply in my heart this week, that that truth would rest deeply in the hearts of the youth that are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that it encouraged you, the fact that Jesus died for you. Why did Jesus die? Because we were caught up in mess, we were caught up in brokenness, that thing called sin. And Jesus died that we could go free. Jesus died that we could be set free from that and be with him. Friends, I hope you have a great week. I need to go wash my hands because that's pretty gross. I've also just touched my phone and cannot wait to see you at Thursday's Zoom o'clock fun.